Let us look at the different types of animals coming under non-caudates or invertebrates. We have animals without backbone and animals with backbone. So the animals without backbone are usually called non-caudates or invertebrates. Let us look at the different organisms coming under these non-caudates. We have sponges, cylindrates like jellyfish or corals. We have flatworm and roundworm. We have mollusks. We have echinoderms. And we have arthropods. Let us look at the sponges. See, sponges are sedentary. So they live under the ocean. They stick to the bottom surface of the ocean. The sponges are used for various purposes like cleaning. We have cylindrates where examples are jellyfish and corals. You are seeing a jellyfish here. It is made up of tentacles. The tentacles are with stinging cells. With that, it used to sting the prey or capture the food by paralyzing the organisms. You have corals here. Sea anemone. It is beautifully colored. Coming to the flat worms and round worms, you are seeing a cylindrical shaped round worm here, which usually inhabit the digestive system. So they are harmful being parasites. Some are free living, say they will be living in the soil. You are seeing mollusks now, like snail. A snail has got a strong muscular feet. Here you are seeing the octopus. Freshwater mussel. Pila, Unio are some other examples. You are seeing the octopus. Coming to the echinoderms, you are seeing a sea urchin. These animals are said to be spiny stinged animals. Looking at the starfish, different varieties of sea urchin having sharp thorns. Here is a Starfish. Coming to the arthropods, which are said to be having insects. So these insects are characterized by having jointed limbs. This is the largest group under the animal kingdom. Scorpion. Beetles. Cricket, you can see the jointed legs here, the legs of these insects are said to be in varying number, some insects have 6 legs, 8 legs or even 10 legs. Seeing the tetron, centipede, spider. Good morning, dear students. After learning about the non cardates, let us study about the cardates in the fourth part of this.
this big chapter on diversity in living organisms. So in this class, we will learn about the phylum chordates. So here phylum chordata has been characterized by having the animals with the presence of notochord or backbone. You can see a distinctively seen notochord or vertebral column in these animals. So phylum chordata has been divided into four subphyla. So in your textbook, you have seen only this animal, Belenoglossus, which belongs to the hemichordata. So under the heading protochordata. So what is this protochordata? We have already learnt about the non-chordates and now we are about to study chordates. So in between the non-chordates and chordates, so there was these type of animals uh, where uh, the notochord or backbone has started its development. So slowly the notochord showed its presence in these animals. So in the first subphyla hemichordata you have seen belenoglossus where notochord is seen only at the anterior region of the body. And in the second example it is a subphyla urochordata consisting of herdminia you are seeing the notochord, the development of the notochord in the tail region. So coming to the third subphyla, Sithela cardata, here most advancement in the development of the notochord is seen where amphiopsis, so the notochord is present throughout the body of the animal. So all these three subphyla comprises a group called protochordata. So you will learn about a group called protochordata where uh, you are learning about this example Belenoglas. So where you can see the uh, development of the notochord in a partial manner. We find only at the anterior region of the body. So you are learning in detail about this four subphylum called vertebrata where Notochord has been replaced by the presence of a strong backbone which is called vertebral column. So under this subphylum, you are learning five groups namely fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. So these chordates so have got three special characters. So here you can see the presence of notochord. So notochord has been replaced by vertebral column in the later subphyla. But at least in the embryonic stage, you will find the presence of the notochord in all the chordates. So coming to the second character, so the animals have got nerve cord. So this is a structure belonging to the nervous system where the brain is extended to form the nerve cord where it takes the protection inside the backbone or notochord. And the third feature is all the chordates have got the presence of gill slits. They may not, they may not be shown in the uh, adult stage. So the third character is the presence of gill slits. So the animals may not show the presence of gill slits in their adult food but in their embryonic stage, all chordates will show the presence of these gill slits. So these chordates are having the special character of having the backbone or notochord. So what is this notochord? See, notochord is a rod-like structure which is a solid supporting type. So that runs along the back of the animal which separates the nervous tissue and the digestive system. So let us study the animal Belenoglossus. So under the uh, subphylum chordates, so which belongs to the subphylum Hemichordata. And we will learn some of the characters of the this protochordates. Phylum chordata has been divided into four subphyla. Subphylum hemichordata, subphylum urochordata, subphylum cephalochordata and subphylum vertebrata. 
So the first three subphyla consist of the examples like Belenoglossus, Herdmania, and Amphioxus. So which are together considered as protocardids. Here in the Belenoglossus, notocard is seen only at the anterior region. In Herdmania, it is seen at only the tail region. Whereas in Amphioxus, it is looking like a fish. You can observe the presence of notocard throughout the length of the animal's body. So let us learn about the subphylum vertebrata in detail where notocard is restricted to its embryonic stage and it is replaced by vertebral column. So they have been given the name vertebrates. So here you are seeing the heading called protocardita. So when we learnt about the non-cardates and now we are learning about the cardates. So there is a group which comes intermediate in between those non-cardates and cardates. So that is called protocardata. So where you can see the development of the notocard in a stepwise manner. So as I said, you are learning about this barrel process which comes under the subphylum hemicardata where you can see the presence of this notocard in the anterior part of the animal's body. So it has got the parts like proboscis, cholerate, collar, bronchial region, gill pores, dorsal curve, genital wings, mid dorsal ridge, hepatic cica, hepatic region, then the post hepatic region and anus. Here the main thing you can observe here is this animal has started developing the notocard or the mid dorsal ridge. It is present at the at only the anterior part of the animal's body. So here you are learning about the balanoglasses as a typical example of the group protocardita. So where the notocard has started developing. So if these type of animals are bilaterally stresymmetrical, having the three layers called diploblastic animals and these have a true body cavity. So true silo can be found. Here the notocard may not be present throughout their stages of their life. So it is present at only certain stages of its life and the notocard is not, not present throughout the length of the body, it is present only at the anterior part of the body. So here the body cavity, it provides space for the muscles so that with the help of those muscles, this animal can move in the water. So these three subphyla, namely hemicardata, urocardata, and cephalocardata, so these are these are water living animals, especially live in the marine habitat. Let us learn five different classes coming under the subphylum vertebrata. See, vertebrata means the animals here will be having vertebral column or backbone. Here the notochord has been completely transformed or completely replaced into vertebral column. Before learning the, those five groups of vertebrates, so let us uh, learn some of the general characteristics of the subphylum vertebrata. Here the true vertebral column is present. So here the backbone is very well developed. So here we are learning five different classes namely fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. So all these five groups of animals so have got distinctive vertebral column and there is an internal skeleton so the body is supported by the skeletal system here it allows the distribution of muscles for the movement so you can find very well developed muscles so which which makes the animal to perform various kinds of activities uh, especially movement in case of animals. So like we studied, so these organisms are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, having the body cavity that is coelomate and these are 
segmented. So when you see the uh, the vertebrates, so when you see at the structure of the bones, so the bones in the four limbs are hind limbs are jointed. So here you can see the segmented body, and there is a complex differentiation of the body design. Here the body has been divided into many organ systems. You can find the the respiratory system, digestive system. circulatory system reproductive system excretory system which consists of several organs so you can find differentiation of the body tissues and the group of tissues forming organs and group of organs forming a organ system and as we learned so it shows the presence of notochord at least in its embryonic stage it has got a dorsal nerve cord nerve cord so the upper surface of the animal the dorsal surface of the animal wow. it has got a part of the nervous system called nerve cord the brain extended to form the nerve cord is a very important organ of all these animals so these are having three germ layers said to be triploblastic animals so they have got paired gill pouches so we think lungs as the respiratory organs sometimes skin as the respiratory organ but all the vertebrates so in their embryonic stage so they will be definitely having the gills as respiratory organs and later those respiratory organs are being transformed to or developed to form the lungs here these are cirrhomates so before learning all the five groups coming under the vertebrates let us learn some of the characteristics we will be studying about them in general here we will study that organisms or animals belonging to these five groups whether they are cold blooded or warm blooded see what do you mean by this so what is the difference between cold blooded animals and warm blooded animals see cold blooded animals are examples like fish reptiles and amphibians so here we should think of the body temperature so the body temperature get adjusted to that of the environment the temperature of the body get adjusted to like that of the temperature of the environment so that is those type of animals are called cold blooded animals whereas warm blooded animals so examples are birds and mammals here warm blooded means when the when we take the temperature of birds or mammals like human beings so the body temperature is always constant so whatever may be the temperature of the environment the atmospheric temperature but the body temperatures always remain constant so that this is the one feature we will be learning often then coming to the heart of these animals so the heart as you have studied will be having four chambers in human beings but so when the vertebrates were developing so the fish had only two chambers and coming to uh, the amphibians and the reptiles they had three chambers in their heart so like that we will consider the number of chambers of the heart and coming to the another feature so whether the animals are oviparous or viviparous see what do you mean by oviparous feature so this is oviparous and viviparous animals see oviparous means so animals which lay eggs so they do not give birth to the egg was directly so those are called oviparous animals so viviparous animals means the animals which give birth to in ones directly so this is another feature we will be observing among these animals and majorly we will be learning this character so we will learn the type of the skin so skin is also called as exoskeleton see how is the skin of the fish when compared to fish how is the skin of a frog and how is the skin of a crocodile or a uh, crocodile or a 
snake. Then coming to the skin of the birds and skin of the mammals. So the skin of the animal will be studied here as a difference. Then coming to the fifth character, so about the fertilization. See what do you mean by fertilization? So when we think of the reproduction in animals, so animals having the male and female species, males will produce the male gametes called sperms, the female species produce the egg. So these male and female gametes, so they get united, so fusion of male and female gamete forms a zygote. So this zygote develops. So who is the uh, this uh, development? So the union of male and female gametes is called the fertilization. So fertilization consisting of this union will be taking place inside the body of the animal or it is outside the body of animal. So that will be considered here. So fertilization that is comprises the union of male and female gamete whether it takes place inside the body of the animal or outside the body of animal whether in the water medium like that. So considering all these characters, so now we will be going on studying all the five groups coming under the subphyla vertebrata. Let us look at the different organisms of five classes of vertebrates or chordates. Let us see how the fish look. Fish are exclusively aquatic animals. Their bodies are covered with scales or plates and are streamlined which helps them in swimming. You are seeing a lionfish here. We are watching a clone fish. Fishes have gills as their respiratory organs. We shall now see amphibians. These are animals that can live on land and also in water. We are seeing a frog. Frog is sitting on the leaf of the lotus. They are cold blooded animals. We are watching a salamander here, another species of salamander. They are cold blooded animals. We are seeing a toad here. They have lungs as their respiratory organs. Coming to the reptiles, these are cold blooded animals. You are seeing a water dragon. They lay eggs and their bodies are covered with scales. You are seeing a horned viper. They have lungs as their respiratory organs. We are observing a crocodile here. Coming to the mammals, we have mammals like reindeer, these are warm blooded animals, we have the temperature of body is always constant, watching monkeys here, they give birth to offspring directly and have hair on their bodies, then watch the dog moving around. Examples are human beings where they have external ears called pinnas. You are seeing the only flying mammals called bats. You are seeing whales and dolphins which are said to be aquatic mammals. Coming to the world of birds, the class apes, we are seeing penguins, 
Yes, sir. Warm blooded animals. Their bodies are covered with beautiful feathers. Watching the plants swimming, pigeons flying. They have wings. You can see the American bald eagle flying. The first class coming under the subphylum vertebrata will belong to the Pisces. So Pisces, other word called fish. So these fish, these are exclusively of aquatic environment or the, they live exclusively in water. So these are exclusively aquatic animals. Skin is covered with scales or plates. So when you observe the skin of the animal, so it is made up of scales or it is called plate. So you are seeing the respiratory organ here as gills. So through the gills, it will absorb the dissolved oxygen in the water. So body is board shaped or streamlined. So here it is, there is a muscular tail so which helps the animal to swim. So it has got five types of fins. Dorsal fin, ventral fin, pectoral fin, pelvic fin and the caudal fin. So five types of fins will help the fish to swim in water. So these are cold blooded animals. So as they live in water, whatever may be the temperature of the water, so the body temperature of these fish will get adjusted to the temperature of the water. So these are cold blooded. So heart is said to be having two chambers. And they used to lay eggs, means oviparous animals. And these fish, so they may be cartilaginous fish or bony fishes. See cartilage and bones are the two types of dense connective tissues. When we see hard bones in our body, we will also see some part where there is a soft part, so they are consisting of cartilage. So likewise, so the fish also belong to the bony type and the cartilaginous type. Sharks and ray fish belong to the cartilaginous fishes, hippocampus, carp and labio belong to the bony fishes. Here you can see the labels of this the examples of the fish include Cinchiropus splendidus called as mandarin fish, Coloferin jordans called angler fish, Terios volitans or lion fish, here torpedo or electric ray, stingray, you have Scoliodon or dogfish. Labio rohita or rohu. Here you are seeing male hippocampus, otherwise called seahorse. Exocetus or flying fish. Anabas or climbing perch. So sometimes you will say that snakes and crocodiles as amphibians. It is totally wrong. See the examples of the amphibians are salamander, toad, rana tigrina, hyla or tree frog. See the frogs mainly constitute the amphibians. So amphibians differ from fish. So in having the skin type. So these lack the scales. So when we see the scales in fish, so these are completely absent in these frogs or amphibians. So whereas the skin is very soft and with the moisture. So it is very moist 
and it is having the mucus glands in the skin. See the mucus glands produces a slimy substance, so making it soft all the time. So it has got three-chambered heart. So when we compare to fish, the frog, the chambers of heart has become developed. Where in fish you saw only two chambers, here in the amphibians or frogs you see the three-chambered heart. So respiration is also being improved. So when you saw uh, the gills as respiratory organs in fish, you can see along with the gills, lungs as the respiratory organ. See sometimes uh, the respiration also takes place through the moist skin. So they lay the eggs, so they are called oviparous. Frogs lay thousands of eggs in the water medium which are said to be oviparous. So the exclusive feature of these animals is that so they live both in water and land. So they are called by the name amphibians. So when the animals having the backbone were born in on this earth, so they lived in the water which were considered as fish. So when they got evolved, so they transformed a certain way. They developed certain features and they are said to be amphibians, so which started living on the land as well as in water. So the examples here you can see salamander, toad, rana tigrina, hyla or tree frog. The third class coming under the subphylum vertebrata has been said to be the reptilia. See the reptiles examples are snakes, lizards, turtles and crocodiles. There is a small one are called turtles or big ones are called tortoises. So here these are cold blooded animals. So when you see a snake or a turtle or lizard, so the temperature of their body get adjusted to the temperature of the atmosphere. So these are said to be having scales. So we learned that the fish were also having scale. But unlike them, so these scales present in these reptiles are very hard and these are rough skinned animals when we see a turtle or a crocodile or a snake. So they breathe through lungs. Lungs are the respiratory organs in these reptiles. So they have got three chambered heart. Whereas you can see little improvement in these animals Those are birds. 
So these lay eggs. So it is well known that all birds will lay the eggs. So they are called oviparous animals. So you can see the skin which is very special in case of birds. So it is made up of colorful feathers. Here the speciality is the limbs are said to be four limbs and hind limbs. So four limbs are modified to become the wings having a colorful feathers. So four limbs are modified to form the wings for their flight. And they breathe through the lungs. So lungs are seen here as respiratory organs. So when you look at the body of the birds, so it is bowl shaped, having a streamlined body, so which is able to fly in the air. So with a piercing beak in the front portion, so it has a lightweight body having pneumatic bones. So the bones inside the birds are having the air cavities in them, so they are able to fly without any burden. And the muscles present in the body of body of these birds are very strong. So they are able to fly for about several thousand kilometers. The fifth class coming under the subphylum vertebrata includes mammalia. So these mammals are popularly called as human beings, whale, cat, rat and bat. So as we are all warm blooded animals. See warm blooded animals means the body temperature is always constant. So irrespective of the temperature of the atmosphere, the body temperature remains always constant. So here the heart is said to be four chambered. So we learned in the life process chapter the functioning of the human heart where you saw four chambered heart. Here the main important character that you can see here is the presence of the memory glands. The female species having the memory gland produces its secretion having a nutritious milk which feed its young one with it. So the body is covered by hairs. So the skin of all the mammals is covered by hair. Covered by hairs so that it protects from all type of environment or climatic conditions. So these are said to be weavy pairs. So when we saw the earlier classes, all those four classes, namely fish, reptiles, amphibians and birds, so they used to lay eggs but these mammals, they give birth to the young ones. And the young ones have the nutritious covering called placenta which protects the growing baby inside it. You, you can see some of the organisms or animals like platypus and echidna which are said to be egg-laying mammals. If you are also astonished to know about the poached mammal called kangaroo where it gives birth to uh, the young one uh, and it uh, protects it inside its pouch. You have a flying mammal called bat and a biggest aquatic mammal called whale. You are seeing now different types of fish, namely dogfish, flying fish, rohu, anglerfish, electric ray, mandarin fish, stingray, seahorse. Fish are aquatic found in fresh and marine water. Skin is covered by scales or plates and have gills for respiration. Body is streamlined and has a tail. They have two chambered heart and are cold blooded. Skeleton is made up of either cartilage or of bone. Colloidon or labiorohita are some of the familiar examples. Here you are seeing different types of amphib amphibians namely salamander, common frog, hyla or tree frog, toad. Amphibians are the animals with uncovered skin which help in gas exchange. They have three chambers in heart and are cold blooded. They are found in both water and on land. They lay eggs without any hard shell. 
frog and salamanders are some of the common examples. You are looking at different types of reptiles where you are seeing turtle, cobra, lizard, crocodile, chameleon and flying lizard. Reptiles are terrestrial as well as aquatic. Skin is covered by scales. They are cold bearded animals mostly having three chambers in heart except crocodile. Their eggs are covered by a hard shell. They breathe through lungs. Snakes, tortoise, lizard and crocodile are familiar examples of reptiles. We are looking at different colorful birds here. Pigeon, crow, ostrich, tufted duck, white stock, sparrow. Birds have four chambers in heart and are warm blooded. They breathe through lungs. They lay eggs covered by hard shells. Their body is covered by feathers and are very good flyers. They do not have teeth and bear beak and claws. All the birds are examples of the class is. You are looking at a huge number of mammals here. They have four chambers in heart and are warm blooded. They breathe through lungs. They have memory glands for the production of milk. They have hairs and nails as well as sweat and oil glands. They give birth to young ones except platypus and echidna where both of these are said to be egg laying mammals. All the milk producing animals are including humans are belonging to the class Mammalia. You are seeing that the mammals like human beings, lion, cat, whale, a flying mammal called bat. Thus we learned five different classes coming under the vertebrates. So far we have learned classifying all the different organisms coming under kingdom animalia. So at the end of this chapter, you are learning the importance of naming all these organisms. So we should name all the living organisms so by a scientific method. So Carolus Linnaeus was a scientist who named all the organisms with the help of scientific name. So this method was called binomial nomenclature. So what is the need of this binomial nomenclature or naming the organisms with scientific name? So there was always a problem of having many names for any organisms in different areas. For example, lady's finger is known by common names like bindi, gumbo in different areas. And another example is, there were organisms namely silverfish and cuttlefish. Silverfish belongs to arthropods whereas cuttlefish belongs to molars. But these are different classes. So to solve this confusion, all the organisms were named scientifically by a method called binomial nomenclature. So in this method, Carlos Linnaeus introduced the system of providing unique names to each organism. There are some few rules which are proposed for naming all the organisms. Whenever we write the scientific name of an organism, we should write always it in a Latin language. Name of the genus begins with a capital letter. Name of the species should begin with a small letter. The scientific name should be written in italics when printed and should be underlined separately when handwritten. So example of a scientific name is human beings has a, having scientific name called Homo sapiens and lion is having scientific name called Panthera leo. So this finishes learning the lesson diversity in living organisms.